bam, and there you have it. Now you have SEC filing data and financial statement data from the SEC API. Finance family, it's your other brother, Adam Gitbags. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to get SEC filing data, including company financial statements from the SEC API for free in Python. So pop open your trusty Google, first Google search SEC API. Now here we have the sec.gov, it's our API documentation. Let's go ahead, open that. And then shout out over here to secapi.io. This guy probably made a multi-million dollar business off of free data from the government. I'll probably cover that in another video, but good on you, homie. Here we are on the SEC documentation. Let's click this link, developer FAQ, and let's also open up this additional documentation. Before I get too crazy into the documentation, let's get our scripts set up. All my scripts are available on my GitHub, so you can go ahead and follow along. I'll put the link in the description. First thing, we're just gonna import our modules requests and then pandas, because we're gonna be making Git requests and then we're gonna be using some data frames. Next, we have our headers variable here. It's just a dictionary, we're defining our email address that's gonna be used to identify ourselves when we make Git requests to the API. So if you go to the developer FAQs, you can see here how they want you to declare your user agent in a request headers. So you have your user agent and then you can just put your email address here and that just identifies yourself to the API. First thing, we're gonna to wanna to hit this endpoint here slash submissions, but we're gonna need a CIK number and we gotta figure out how to find that because there's a ton of companies all with different CIK numbers. So let's pop over to this developer FAQs over here and then we can kind of scroll down a little bit and then we'll see here this question here, do we have a file that maps company tickers and CIK company names? And we got it here. So this is gonna be company tickers.json. So you can open that up here and then it'll have a, a link for us. And then we're gonna use a Git request to go ahead and get all of this CIK data here. So you can go ahead and copy copy this link out. Now up next, we're making our first request to the API. We have request.git and we're making a request to this link here that contains all the CIK data. And then we're also including our headers as I described here. So we can go ahead and make our first request and then we can see that that was a success. So let's go ahead and take a look at the response. So you can go ahead and look at the response here. It looks like it has all of our CIK data, but since it's a return a dictionary back, let's take a look at the keys. It looks like the keys are just a series of numbers. So let's go ahead and examine the first key. It looks like we have a CIK number and then we have a ticker and it's for Apple here. So if you wanna parse the CIK directly out, you can go ahead and just use this code here. And then that's gonna give you your CIK directly with no leading zeros. So all we're gonna do next is just move that dictionary into a data frame and then reorient the index there. So then we can see we have a data frame here of the CIK numbers, the ticker, and also the name of the company. Now, one thing we're going to want to do is add leading zeros to the CIK numbers, because as you can see, the CIK here for Apple is six digits long. But then if you go back to our endpoint here, it needs a 10 digit CIK number. So it includes the leading zeros. So we're just gonna use this code here to add the leading zeros to our data frame. And now we can see that our CIK number is 10 digits long and we're just gonna use Apple. So we can go ahead and just parse out the CIK number with our leading zeros. So CIK and here is our 10 digit number. So now before we go get financial data, we need to get an idea of like what financial data is available. So now we're here, we're gonna go ahead and hit the submissions endpoint and we're gonna just add in our CIK number through an F string. So as you can see, we're gonna request some metadata here. We're gonna use a Git request, and then I have the CIK number here, and we're just inputting that as an F string. And of course, we're sending our headers through. So the request was success. We can just take a look at the data it gets back. Looks like a bunch of data. We're definitely gonna to wanna to review this JSON data here. So here's some code. Okay, looks like another dictionary under filings there. So we can go ahead and inspect the keys. Let's go ahead, take a look under recent, looks like more, and that's a dictionary. So we can take a look at the keys. And then it looks like we have just a bunch of data here. So here now it looks like we have a bunch of the filing metadata here. So we have the accession number, a bunch of different report dates and some other information. So let's just go ahead and let's take this dictionary here and let's create a data frame from it. So we can take a look at the data here. It looks like a bunch of different numbers, but let's take a quick look at what column are available to us. So here's all the columns, gonna be the same, but then let's just take a look at some of this data here we have. So we have the accession number here, and then we have a report date and then our form title. We can see here we have our 10 Qs, our 8 Ks, and our 10 Ks, and a bunch of other forms. 
So if I just wanted to look at a specific row in the data frame for a specific form, you can see I have the 10Q report here, and then I have all the other metadata that's associated with that 10Q report. So that's how you get the metadata for all the forms that have been filed by a specific company. So back to our SEC API docs here, and we're gonna skip down and take a look at this XBRL company facts. Facts. And so we're gonna use this to see how can we parse through a bunch of data in the company concepts. So we're gonna take data from the company facts endpoint and we're gonna feed that into the company concepts endpoint. I'll show you how it works. So first thing here, we've got company facts. We're gonna use a Git request and then we're hitting the company facts endpoint and we have our CIK number here. So we can quickly just take a look at that data. And as you can see, it's a ton of nested dictionaries and a list in there. So let's review a bit of the data. Looks like we have some keys. Let's go into the facts. We can see again, it's just a bunch of dictionaries. So let's take a closer look. Looks like there's a couple different routes you can take DEI and US gap. So let's take a look at DEI first. So once you go into DEI and then you go into entity common stock shares outstanding, it brings you a bunch of data here, but we can see it's dictionaries. So let's take a look at the keys there. And as you can see from the keys here, it's another set. So we're gonna to wanna to go a bit further. Let's go into units. So now we're in units and then we have another dictionary. So we're getting closer to our data here. And you can always check using dot keys, but we're just keep things moving. We're under shares and now we're at a list. So let's just take the first item on that list. And it looks like this is also metadata for specific filings. So we have the end date of the report. We have the value. So clearly we're gonna be taking a look at the entity common stock shares outstanding. And here is the value. So once you get all the way through units, shares, and then you pick a specific item in the list, then that's gonna give you the end date of the report and then the value of the common stock shares outstanding. So we're gonna back out through the data structure a little bit and take a look at facts US gap. So it's an absolute ton of data. It looks like a bunch more dictionaries. So let's take a look at the keys here. All right, awesome. Now I can recognize all of these as line items from financial statements here and looks like there's a ton. After we ran this code to get the keys from facts US gap, we can see that these are the keys of our dictionary. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take accounts payable and we're just gonna go to find the value of that key. And that's what you see in this code right here. So after I ran that, you can see it gives you a label and a description and then it also gives you some values here. It looks like it comes from different time periods. So we have values here of accounts payable, but you can see it was deprecated in 2009 and it doesn't appear on more than two forms. So we can also take a look at revenues and it looks like this is only reported on a specific amount of forms. Definitely doesn't look like it's on all the forms for whatever reason. And then we have assets here, which you can just see this data series is much longer. As you can see, it returns different amounts of data. So definitely something to be aware of when you're parsing through the company facts. So now that we're aware of how to use the company facts to get the company concepts that we'll input into our company concept API request, as you can see here. So we're gonna use the information from this dictionary to input into our next API request. Awesome, so the next endpoint we're gonna use is this XBRL company concept. We're gonna put our CIK number in here and then we're gonna put the name of the accounting line item right here. So as you can see from this request, we have the CIK inputted through the F string. And then we've also just hard coded here, the line item on the balance sheet. So great, now we wanna review that data there. It looks like a couple dictionaries and a list. So we can review the keys of the dictionary there. Let's go into units. And then here we have another dictionary. So let's take a look at the keys there. It's USD, let's go ahead and take a look into USD. Looks like a list here. So then let's go ahead and get our first item on the list there and bang, it looks like we have the form name here. And we also have a value for assets. If you wanna parse the actual asset value, just add val to the end there. And then you have the units in dollars. Next, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take all these dictionaries in that list and then we're gonna turn it into a data frame. So you can see here a nice and neat data frame. Let's take a look at the columns. So we have all of these columns here and then let's see like if there's different forms. It looks like there's several different forms here. So for demonstration purposes, what we're gonna do here is just take every row 
that's associated with a 10Q form. And then we're just gonna reorder the index so everything's super neat. And as you can see here, we've got a neat data frame with only 10 Qs. And lastly, we're just gonna plot out our assets and our dates here. So as you can see, we have our assets from the balance sheet here, and we have data going back to 2008. Bam, and there you have it. Now you have SEC filing data and financial statement data from the SEC API in Python, and it's all free. And shout out to the homie who grew that million dollar company off of the free government data and just sells it to corporations. I mean, pretty smart, right? Anyways, if you love the content, subscribe, join the finance family, buy me a coffee, whatever you gotta do. You have my blessing fam, let's go get these bags.